The United Church of Canada is a member of the Canadian Food Grains Bank. It receives donations of food from farmers across the country. Together, the United Church and Food Grains can provide emergency food aid and can also replace seeds and tools lost in hurricanes and other disasters. The Cuban Council of Churches is asking the Food Grains Bank for a shipment of beans to help people in the hurricane-ravaged areas of eastern Cuba. The origin of the Food Grains Bank goes back to the 70s when um, when a number of Mennonites were working in Bangladesh, um, when it, Bangladesh faced very large food deficits at the time. At the same time, these um, people had brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers back on the prairies that were sitting on surplus grain, and they were saying, there's something wrong here. There's, you know, we have people that are, you know, our family can't even sell the grain they have, and there's people that are hungry, and can't we put this together in some way? and they began to sort of explore and think about it. And the notion of creating a bank, a pool of food that could be used when there are emergencies and needs. We have an arrangement with all the grain companies in, in Canada. So um, an individual farmer can go down and make a donation at any, any elevator in Canada. And the uh, elevator will receive that grain donation and handle it. And we have arrangements with all of them. We as a food grains bank do not actually maintain any storage sites. We have no storage anywhere in the country. It's all handled within the commercial system. We have, we have title to some of the grain and the Wheat Canadian Wheat Board um, works very closely with us to, uh, to facilitate the donations. And then when we need to make a shipment, we can simply go in and claim back the amount of grain that's been donated for us. In some cases, the grain is sold. Um, we're cut a check and then we use that money to go and buy the product we need in or to help pay for transport and that type of thing. The biblical image are Christ talking about the fact that in each person you see Christ. That Christ is there and that you have some responsibility to when, when a person is hungry and you have something, you share. So I think underneath it all is this notion of sharing and that who is your neighbor? Your neighbor is not just the person across the street. It's not just someone in your family. It's the person you encounter in some way. And the churches now encounter people all over the world. One of the underlying principles of the Food Grains Bank is that we do not do any direct programming ourselves. We work through the church agencies, the church members. They are the ones that maintain relationships with partners and different church groups and organizations around the world, groups they've been working with for many years, and, um, and all the resources that we mobilize and put together is all channeled through these existing church relationships. And it's the Canadian churches working in partnership with organizations and in the developing world that, that handle, that plan, that implement all the programs that we support. Our mandate is to respond to emergencies overseas. Um, the churches, Canadian churches, have lots of other in institutions and arrangements that enable them to respond to emergencies in Canada. We were created to respond to emergencies overseas. We've been very concerned that the government's aid program over the last number of years has basically walked away from a lot of rural issues and agricultural issues. And, um, and we're now trying to, you know, in discussions with, with, with um, people in the bureaucracy, with the minister's office, trying to see if we can get a refocus back on, on rural areas because the reality is that most hungry people in the world today live in rural areas and are in some way connected with agriculture. Agriculture is a major item being discussed in the, at the World Trade Organization. It's one of the issues that, um, in fact, they had to talk about after the last round. Um, the Uruguay round, there was a requirement that, in fact, agriculture come back up for rediscussion. Um, it is now ongoing. The negotiations are happening right now. This year is probably the most critical year for the, for the negotiations around trade and agriculture. They are setting in place the basic parameters of what the new agreement will look like over the next 6 to 12 months. Um, we are monitoring these discussions very, very closely. We are putting in proposals. We meet regularly with Canadian trade officials to try and advance the interest of hungry people, of poor people, developing countries. And what's happening in these negotiations, the developing countries are saying, unless we get some of our issues addressed, we're not going to sign a deal. And so suddenly the Canadian trade negotiators are willing to talk to us and to find out what are these issues, how can we find a way of you know, taking care of legitimate Canadian interests, but also doing it in a way that provides benefits to, to developing countries and to, to poor people.